Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing a tier list ranking of every single book that I have read in the first half of 2021. I've never done a tier list before, so I think we're gonna have fun. Um, I've read 43 books so far and basically I want to rank them just because I tend to give good ratings, I think, and, well, I don't think, I know, I know I tend to give high ratings, and I enjoy a lot of what I read, so it's not like I'm lying or anything, but I thought that this would be fun to do just because this is going to be like a relative ranking in terms of the self-contained set of books that I've actually read. So. Um, they're kind of going to be compared to each other a little bit, while also being my, like, ob as objective as possible ranking of these books. So, my categories that I have here are new favorites, really enjoyed reading, good, it was fine, and actively disliked. N and as you'll notice, there are, like, three positive categories. And the reason that I split that up like that is just because I have liked a lot of the things that I've read, and so I think that it will be easier for me to split them up into, like, things that I still thought were good versus, like, things that fall above that. So, I mean, without further ado, let's just get right into it. Uh, I was gonna attempt to do this in the order that I actually read them. Actually, you know what? I think that they did show up in the order that I actually read them. I attempted to save the images in order, and it seems like this tier list rank actually likes me, and it allowed me to to do them in order. So um, let's start with Warbreaker. Warbreaker is the very first uh, book that I read this year, and in terms of the Cosmere, it's not my favorite. But I think that in terms of, like, my enjoyment compared to a lot of other books, like, Brandon Sanderson is really high up there. Um, so this one is hard because I liked it. I really liked it. Hmm. What I might do is put it in good for now and then see how it compares once I have more in the rankings. Because, like, the magic system in the world in Warbreaker I think are really cool. Um, I think that it was mostly the characters in that one where there were a few that I could connect to, but there were a few where I couldn't connect as much, and I'm usually really connected to, to Sanderson's characters, and that's one of my favorite things about his books. So I think that that's where Warbreaker fell a little bit more flat for me, but that doesn't mean that it was bad. It was still good. So it's in good. Um, okay, the next one is going to be Why We Sleep. Unlocking the Power of Sleep and Dreams. This one was a nonfiction by Matthew Walker, who's a PhD in neuroscience. Um, I think I'm going to put this one under really enjoyed reading. I don't usually think of nonfiction books as possibly being new favorites, and like I don't think that this one would be either, but it was really valuable. Like the information in there and the way that he presented it was fantastic because he struck such a good balance between giving people with scientific backgrounds what they want in terms of like empirical evidence, research, and actually telling you in scientific terms what things mean, while also having like analogies, metaphors for like things making sense to the general population as well. And like if you don't have a science background, you could read that book and still get the impact of it. So. I loved it, and I mean, I think that everyone should read it. Sleep is very important. Okay, so next we have, okay, I mean, next up we have The Well of Ascension and The Hero of Ages, which, I mean, really are just going to go into new favorites. That's, like, an automatic for me, honestly. I loved the Mistborn trilogy so much. First era. I haven't read second era. But... I did like, okay, so this is kind of funny. I was looking back at my Goodreads ratings the other day, 
And I noticed that I gave Well of Ascension like four and a half stars on the first round when I gave the other two five stars. And I looked at it and I was kind of like, what was I thinking? Because I'm pretty sure that Well of Ascension is actually my favorite of the trilogy. So I, I don't know why I rated it lower than the other two, but <laughs> I mean, I think it's going to go above the Hero of Ages. I loved The Well of Ascension. I mean, I loved both of them. It's like splitting hairs. They were fantastic. Okay. The next one is a Chicken Soup for the Soul book, uh, and I'm just going to put it under It Was Fine. Like, it was kind of cute. It was called Listen to Your Dreams, and basically, if you've ever read a Chicken Soup for the Soul book, you know that the idea is that people send in stories that are meant to be, like, uplifting or heartwarming or inspiring. And the thing about this particular book is that it was people sending in stories about dreams that they have had that were supposedly, like, signified things and like dreams that were like prophetic or dreams that told them things and like I don't know I <laughs> I would like to believe those things and like I'm sure that if it happened to me and these people where it happened in their own lives they fully believed it but I just I, I found it a little cheesy it was cheesy I don't know like <laughs> it was kind of just a, a, a cute read I guess while I was reading it, but it didn't have a lasting impact, and it was fine. Um, okay, next up, we have Crazy Rich Asians, and I'm not sure whether this goes in good or really enjoyed reading. Maybe... Maybe it'll go above Warbreaker in the top of good. I really liked Crazy Rich Asians. I loved the Gossip Girl vibes. I, it's not something that I'm interested in reading about all the time, but it's, it's far enough removed from real life and the drama is so overdone that it's extremely entertaining. And as long as like your protagonist has some vindication at the end, like I will eat that up. And I really did love Crazy Rich Asians. So we'll just, we'll put it there for now. I'm sorry, Warbreaker, but they're two totally different books. How do I even compare them? Um, okay. The next one is The Disappearance by J.F. Friedman, which is like a, it's, it's sort of like a mystery thriller, but also kind of like a legal thriller. It has, it has courtroom stuff, but that wasn't the main point of the book, but it very much was present, like the, the um, character is a lawyer. Um, I'll just, uh, I don't know, I liked this at the time that I read it, but I'm thinking that it might just go in This Was Fine, above Listen to Your Dreams, just because like I enjoyed it while I read it, but again, I don't feel like it had a lasting impact, and I feel that way about a lot of thrillers, because once they're done, I'm kind of just like, okay. Like, I don't really think about the characters, I don't... So, it was fine. Okay. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. For the first, like, three quarters of this book, it could have gone in, it was fine. But then the ending happened, and I think it's going to go in actively disliked. Because I thought there was a lot of potential in this book, and for the first, like, half, I was like, man, why don't, why don't people like this? I'm on board. And then after the halfway point, I was like, where are we going with this? And then it turned out that I didn't like where we were going. And uh, I wasn't sold on like this whole villain origin story. It seemed like, like kind of turning on a dime. And I thought that I, it could have been better done. It could have been so much better done. So I'm sorry, but I just, yeah. Okay. <laughs> My Dark Vanessa is going to be tough because I have titled this category, Really Enjoyed Reading. Did I really enjoy reading this? No. It was a hard book to read and like I needed breaks from it. But I still think that it goes in this category because of the impact that it had on me. 
like it was such a heavy book but it was such important subject matter as well so I feel like this is that it was a really fantastic book this is just a little bit of a clash between my experience with the book and my titling of the categories because I don't think this is the type of book where you have fun it's definitely not the type of book where you have fun but it was amazing okay Jade City Jade City is going to go right there, right up there in really enjoyed reading. Jade City was not a favorite, but I really enjoyed it. I was kind of hoping that it would be a favorite because like I know that a lot of people love it, but then again, a lot of people say that Jade War is even better, so I'm still kind of holding out hope. Like Jade City I, I think was four and a half stars for me, I still thought it was great. I loved the family elements. There were a couple of characters that I was really invested in, um, and that was enough to see me through. And so I'm, I'm really like invested in what's gonna happen with some of the characters. I'm a very character-driven reader, and I really enjoyed it. That's why the character, that, that's why the character, that's why the category is titled that. Okay, In a Holidays is gonna go in the bottom of good, I think, because this is another one where like I don't necessarily think about it after the fact, so in that sense it could go in It Was Fine, but I liked it more than either of the books in It Was Fine, because it was just like a really cute romance. I read it at the right time. I read it around Valentine's Day on purpose, just because I thought that that was like in the spirit, and I really liked it, so it'll it gets to go in good. Okay, we have, and every morning the way home gets longer and longer. Um, this is a tough one because it's so short, but it's really impactful at the same time. Maybe I will put this at the bottom of really enjoyed reading. Like, I don't feel like I got as much out of it as I did with these other three, but it was still really great. And as someone who has had a grandparent deal with dementia and struggle with that it's it's hard to watch someone struggle with that it's really hard and it's also hard to watch the impact that it has like on family members and yeah this this book made me emotional and so I think that it deserves its place okay next up we have Red Seas Under Red Skies which is going to be well it's going to be a new favorite for sure but but where in New Favorites is it going to be? That's the question. Let's put it above the Hero of Ages. I think that that's fine. I'm happy with that for now. We'll see if I want to move it around at the end. Next up, we have Ghost Ship by Clive Cussler, which I liked more than most, like, action adventure books that I've read like I thought that the character had more depth than some others that I've read will you go at the top okay I think I'm gonna put it at the top of it was fine just because are we gonna put it at the bottom of good I don't know we'll see how I feel when we get farther into the list but I I liked the character more like a lot of the times if you read like some sort of like basically an action movie in book form where you have like guys with guns and like badass like you're I don't know you're gonna shoot people and like you're going on these missions and usually that doesn't do it for me mostly because I don't find that there's any depth at all so this one was sort of like that but it did have a nice mystery that I was intrigued by and it also had like a character that I thought was a step above some of the others from that genre that I've read. You know what? We'll put it in the bottom of good because I was like I wasn't blown away by this book, but I did like it a, quite a bit, and it was because of those factors that I mentioned. Um, okay, the ocean at the end of the lane is definitely a new favorite. I don't think it quite hits the level of either the Gentle and Bastard series or Mistborn for me, but I loved it. And I have talked about it like in quite a few videos now, so I won't really go into it, but like the atmosphere in that book was amazing. And I'm honestly really looking forward to going back and rereading it because it's quite short. 
The illustrated edition that I have, I think is like 330 pages thereabouts. And that's including like some full page illustrations. So it was a quick read. I read it in like one sitting, one night. And it's definitely a new favorite. It was fantastic. Okay. Hood Feminism is another one where the experience with this book is going to clash with the with the title of the category just because like this was so valuable and I learned a lot and I did enjoy reading it but it's not exactly that type of enjoyment you know what I mean because it's tough subject matter like it's talking about why women struggle with the things that they do and why like food security housing etc things that are very basic human needs need to be like reframed sometimes as feminist needs because women struggle with them at a disproportionate rate and especially women of color. So it's not like happy-go-lucky necessarily, but very necessary, very necessary content. So I did enjoy reading it in that sense. Um, The House in the Cerulean Sea. I don't know that it's a new favorite, is it? I don't know. I think I'll put it at the top of really enjoyed reading. Just because I'm I'm not sure that it's on the same level for me as the ones that I have put in favorites, but it it could be. If I had a category between those two, I mean that would be stupid. That would be splitting hairs, but it would go there. <laughs> okay. Room I want to apologize to my roommate because I know that she loves this book and it's one of her favorites, but Room was fine. It'll go above Listen to Your Dreams, but it was just, it just didn't do exactly what I wanted it to do. Like, the execution just didn't end up landing for me, and I don't see myself ever rereading it. I'm not mad that I read it. It was just fine. That's what that category is there for. Okay. The Eye of the World, the Eye of the World was was good. I'll put it below Warbreaker. The Eye of the World, like, the Eye of the World did a lot of what it had to do to set up such a huge series, and obviously I'm only partway through, so there are probably even more things that it set up that I haven't seen pay off for yet, because I've only finished book five, but... The Eye of the World was just not as gripping to me as the rest of the books have been. Like, I personally have seen a vast improvement as I've continued with the series compared to the first book. And that's not to say that I didn't like the first book, because I did. It's just that I've liked the others so much more. So The Eye of the World gets a nice spot in the middle of good. Um, And then I went immediately from reading The Eye of the World into reading The Great Hunt. And this one, I am going to say it gets a spot in really enjoyed reading. Where will it go? Did I like it more than Jade City? Probably. Did I? Yeah. Yeah. This is fine, I think. The House in the Cerulean Sea and The Great Hunt could probably not be more different in terms of like being fantasy but being different. I mean I guess maybe if The Great Hunt was grimdark then it could be even more different but yeah it's different. (laughs) Um, Okay next up we have Strange Planet which is like literally just a little book of comics and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna plop it in at the bottom of really enjoyed reading because it's not even a novel, so, like, it's on here because I read it, but, like, it's it's a little tiny little book of comics, so it's not going to have the same impact, but, like, I did love it, so it just can't go above these other books, you know what I mean? Because it's not the same, but it's fine where it is. Okay, ta Coates, Between the World and Me. Okay, this, this might be a little controversial, but I'm going to put this at the top of good, Even though I gave it five stars, I'm still going to put it at the top of good because his language was really beautiful, but in being really beautiful, I feel like I didn't quite grasp his meaning of everything the first time I read it. I think I'm going to have to read it again to, like, really kind of get my head around it and make sure that I'm taking in everything that he wanted to say. So 
that's not that's not like a criticism necessarily of the book that's more like the stuff that I'm used to reading is not written in that style and before I say too much about the book I want to make sure that I know kind of what he was saying if that makes sense so we'll put it in good it was definitely good I enjoyed it so fine um Romeo and Juliet Romeo and Juliet is an interesting one because it's such an, well, it's a classic. It's like the definition of a classic. Maybe we'll put it just below the eye of the world because it was definitely good. Um, even though like I enjoy the story, Shakespeare is never going to be a favorite for me, I don't think. Like, just because of the experience of reading it, it's a little bit more work, even though I am much better equipped now to understand the language and some of the, like, conventions and things that are of use in his stuff than I was, like, say, back in high school. I think the last time I read Romeo and Juliet was in grade nine, and I had not read it since. So I understood a lot more of it this time, even though I already felt like I had a handle on the story the first time. But it's just kind of... It's just kind of good, I guess. I don't know. I liked it. It, it has commentary. That's good. Serpent and Dove. I think Serpent and Dove is going to get a spot in really enjoyed reading. Because I, I... But where do I put it in really enjoyed reading? That's the question. Um, maybe... Mm, that's hard. Maybe I'll put it here just below and every morning the way home gets longer and longer um i really liked the romance in serpent and dove and i really liked the magic too i'm a sucker for a good enemies to lovers where they're kind of pitted against each other by the fact of their stations in life but not necessarily on a personal level and then when they get to know each other on a personal level then like sparks fly and things like that I eat that up I like I know that some people don't like enemies to lovers and that's fine but it has always been one of my buzzwords to be honest mostly for fan fiction I haven't read a ton of it in books but I liked it <laughs> I loved it. So, and I also really liked the magic system because I really enjoy when there is a cost to performing magic and therefore it's not just something to be used willy-nilly all the time. Like, it, it requires some thought. It requires you to, like, commit, I guess, and you need to know what you're doing because you're, like, you know, it has consequences. So I really like that. And I am hopefully going to be reading the second book soon. So... We'll see how it goes from there. The, the, the ending of the first book kind of, like, it didn't fall flat for me. I liked what happened, but it seemed like so much happened in such a short period of time that I was like, holy crap, what, what? Um, and so that kind of brought it down from five stars for me, but I still think I gave it 4.5. It was good. It was really good. So it gets its little place there. Okay, which one is this? The Dragon Reborn? Yeah, you'll see that uh, the covers switched because I started collecting the floppy paperbacks instead of mass market. What I'll usually do when I'm starting a new series is I'll buy a mass market of the first book or maybe the first couple. Wheel of Time is so long that I bought the first two just to see whether I like it, you know? And then if I know that I'm going to like it, then I'll buy the format that I actually want to have on my shelf. So that's what happened here. But the Dragon Reborn, I think the Dragon Reborn might take a place at the top of really enjoyed reading because I wouldn't say that it was quite a favorite book just yet, although the series is getting into that territory for sure right now. But see, okay, I can't, I can't really talk about these because spoilers and also the Wheel of Time is hard to explain, but it was, fan it was great. I really liked it. It definitely was above the great hunt for me because of what it did with more characters and like their journeys and, and growth and stuff like that. But it's not, it's just not quite a favorite. It's fine where it is. Oh my God, excuse me. It's fine where it is. Okay. 
we have Black Sun, which is going to be a hard one because I rated this really highly, but when I look at some of the other stuff that I've read, well, okay, it's definitely not down here. Maybe we'll put it just below Jade City? I think I feel good about that. Black Sun did a lot of setup for the rest of like the books in the series that are going to be coming in that series, but I still liked what it did. Um, you know what? We're going to move The Way Home Gets Longer and Longer above Why We Sleep. I'll, I'll, mess with the, I'll mess with this at the end. I think that I like Black Sun there for now because I really enjoyed it. Um, okay, Leviathan Wakes. To be honest with you, I think that Leviathan Wakes is going to go at the top of It Was Fine. Well, that might be a little harsh, but see, I liked it enough to continue on with the series, and I do plan to continue on with the series, but I didn't love it like I was hoping to, and so, okay, maybe I should, maybe it should go in good. Um, maybe it can just go at the almost at the bottom of good. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. I feel like it was fine is a little too harsh for it. One of the main characters in the book I just, I really couldn't connect to, and that was kind of what drew me out a little. The other main character and his crew, I really liked following them, but I think that the fact that like half of the book was from a perspective that I just didn't like quite get into was the defining factor of why I didn't love it. And there's, there wasn't much I could do about that. But like the world and the, I guess, antagonist, if you can call it that, they're interesting. So I do still want to continue. Okay, next up we have The Good Daughter, which is going to be pretty high up, I think, in really enjoyed reading. But where exactly? Maybe just below My Dark Vanessa. Did I like it more than Jade City? I think I did. This one was a surprise to me, and I talked about it. I talked, I think I talked about it in my mid year book free goat tag. I don't, I, I mentioned how I don't always love thrillers because I think that they, they do a lot of the same things a lot of the times, and with it being mostly like real world events to draw from, it's not like it's fantasy where the author is creating whatever they want. The fact that thrillers only have like a certain range of stuff to draw from, they don't always do it for me. But the reason this one did was because of the depth of the characters and how much I loved them and connected to them. And that's what really put it over the top for me. Because I mean, like I've mentioned, I'm a character driven reader. So if you can do that for me and make me really feel for your characters and like really love them, that's like what puts a book over the top for me 100%. And The Good Daughter did that for sure. Okay, next up we have Mort by Terry Pratchett. And when I first read this, I loved, like, I loved it, and I still do, but I think that now I have a little bit more perspective after reading Guards, Guards, and to be quite honest with you, Guards, Guards was so much better than Mort. Mort, I, looking back, feel like it was a little too long, like it overstayed just a little bit. And if it was shorter, maybe the pacing was a little tighter. Maybe I would feel the same way about it that I do Guards Guards, but Guards Guards was so good that it actually made me change my rating of Mort from a five star to a four star because of perspective, basically. I'm like, oh, this is what Discworld can be. So that means that Mort isn't five stars, even though it's still really, really good. So maybe I will put this, well, did I like it more than, maybe I'll put it here. Like it still gets a, it still gets a pretty good position, but it's just not quite on the same level, I guess. Now, A Lots Away is also going to fall in really enjoyed reading, I think, and the question is going to be of where to put it. Tier lists are harder than I thought, like the further you get into them, because there's so many places that I could put this. <laughs> but 
but did I like it more? Maybe I'll put it here. Like, I feel like it's in the middle is a pretty good spot for it. I, I think I liked it more than Black Sun, but then again, they, those are so different. In a lots of way, I just, I really loved the sort of magic in the real world element and how everything is pretty much the same except that it's not because like things are real like monsters and mythological things and magic and and that stuff has been woven into the real world so that we're used to it we've adapted to it it just exists i found that really cool and i really liked the main character um, I liked the asexual representation. I liked her friendship with her friend Jay. There was a lot to love about Alatsue. Um, I think I'm happy with where it is. Okay, so I mentioned in The Dragon Reborn that it wasn't quite in favorite territory yet, but The Shadow Rising definitely is in favorite territory. So... I don't think it gets a spot above the Hero of Ages just because the Hero of Ages closed out one of my favorite trilogies brilliantly. But oh, this is so hard. No, I think I'm happy with that because like I loved The Shadow Rising, but it still is like the fourth book in a 14 or 15 depending on how you look at it book series. So there's still there's still a ton to come. So I, I loved it. It's definitely a favorite by itself, but it just doesn't quite attain that same level. Okay, the Midnight Library. I've discussed this a little bit before, but I think it was just fine. Um, I didn't actively dislike it, but it just wasn't, it just didn't do it for me. The execution of the idea just wasn't what I wanted it to be. And I guess that's all I'll say. I don't like really giving negative thoughts, so it was fine. Um, Malice by John Gwynn. This is definitely going to go in really enjoyed reading because it's not a favorite quite yet, but I can see a ton of potential based on this book for The Faithful and the Fallen to be a favorite series of mine, and I'm really looking forward to reading Valor this month but not quite a favorite yet. But where does it go? You know what? I think it goes just below The Great Hunt. I think I'm happy with that. I don't know. We'll see how I feel at the end. I'm happy with it for now. I loved, like, the Faithful and the Fallen is setting up a very classic battle between good and evil. It has a god level conflict, which I always love. It has multiple points of view that are a lot at first, but I had a few to latch onto that I really liked, and that was enough to get me through until I kind of got my bearings more about who all the characters were, and I'm excited to see where it goes next. So I did really enjoy reading it. Um, okay, next up we have Cemetery Boys. And I have some conflicting thoughts on this, and I mentioned this a little bit in my June wrap-up, but I really, really liked certain aspects of this book, but the story could have been stronger, I think. Like, the actual story wasn't what I was here for necessarily, it was more the characters, the trans representation, the exploration of their Latinx culture and the magic, and I loved all of that, loved the relationship. So where does it go? Maybe it goes on top of good. I I feel pretty I feel pretty good about that. Um yeah. Okay. And then we have the fires of heaven where I still really I still really enjoyed it, but not quite as much as the shadow rising just because well, I mean, I talk about the reasons in my spoiler chat, and I don't want to get into them here because I don't want to do spoilers, but there was, like, a few reasons why I didn't like it quite as much, but I still loved it. So let's put this in... Oh, no, where does it go? Ah, just above... just above Jade City, maybe? 
man, I'm I'm not convinced. On, see, the, the my problem is that like with my dark Vanessa and the good daughter, I'm like, oh man, do they deserve to be here? They're not fantasy because fantasy is my favorite genre. But that doesn't mean that there aren't books that are not fantasy that I can absolutely love. So I just need to be like, no, Grace, bad, stop. Doesn't matter if they're not fantasy. Um, but it is tough <laughs> to gauge and compare. Uh, I guess I'm fine with that ranking. Okay, Assassin's Apprentice. Again, I had some mixed feelings. It was a four star for me. Maybe it's gonna go, maybe it's gonna go just above, yeah, just above Serpent and Dove because I was really on board with Robin Hobb's prose. I really loved the way that she did her world building and there was a lot to love about this book. Like, I liked a lot of characters, the main character, a few side characters. I liked the way that plot points were wrapped up in this book. Uh, it was slowly paced, but the ending was really engaging and I like a coming of age story. Um, yeah, no, I think that this is fine. I guess I should have known that really enjoyed reading was going to be the biggest category. Okay, next up we have Mythology by Edith Hamilton, and I think that this is going to go somewhere in good. Maybe below the eye of the world? I don't know. All of the stories and Greek myths in this were really interesting, but I almost just feel like on some level I know a lot of them already. There were some that I didn't know, but Greek mythology is just so well known and like there are a lot of things inspired by it. So when I read this, it didn't feel like anything fresh or new, but it's kind of ironic because I have to remember that like the myths themselves are what came first. So this would have been the thing that everything else is inspired by. It's not their fault that I happen to have read everything else first. So, but I think it deserves its spot in good. It was very enjoyable. They're just not told in like a modern sense, so they don't have that same narrative structure, but I liked them, so they're fine. Okay, The Sea of Monsters by Percy Jackson. <sighs> This is tough because this is just a fun little book, like the Percy Jackson books are just a nice time. So maybe it'll go below Leviathan Wakes, but but I enjoyed it more than Leviathan Wakes probably. Maybe I can just take a spot below Romeo and Juliet. I think I'm satisfied with that. It's nothing special. Like I don't even really critically reflect on those books because they're just they just are what they are. They're middle grade. Not that middle grade can't or doesn't like have value and do exciting things with its storytelling, but I don't think that's the point. I just don't. I think enjoyment is the point. So it's fine where it is. Okay, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. Quite different from most other things that I've read because I don't really read horror a whole lot, but I did really love it. And so let's, we have to decide where it goes. Did I like it more than Mort? Probably. If you asked me right now which book I wanted to reread, it would be The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. Between those two. Did I like it more than Serpent and Dove? That's tougher. Um. Yeah, it can take a spot above there for now. I really liked it. I was surprised. The The themes of motherhood, I loved them. And that was like really central to the, that was the central theme of the book was like wanting to protect your children and like feeling like you are helpless if you can't. And it was really interesting. And the horror was perfect for me, like the perfect level. So I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, okay, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them was, I think we're going to put it at the bottom of good, just because, and I've said this before, but it was basically just like comfort food to me, like 
I know the Harry Potter universe so extremely well that coming back to it for this was kind of just like a little romp. Like it was a two hour audiobook. So it was good. It was like, I don't know. Part of me wants to put it in. It was fine, but I feel like it was more enjoyable to me than the books that are in. It was fine. So it can just go at the bottom of good. Okay. Guards, guards. Wow, guys. I loved Guards, guards. I talk more about it in my June wrap up, but oh my god. Like, reading this made me, like I said, I enjoyed Mort, but I enjoyed Guards, guards so much more, and it made me, like, so much more excited to continue with Discworld. Um, it was, it was amazing. But where does it go? That's the question. It's definitely a new favorite. Um, oh god, maybe a, maybe just above the ocean at the end of the lane. You know what, I think I might move both the Shadow Rising and Guards Guards above the Hero of Ages. But does the Well of Ascension really deserve to be at the top of this list? Oh my god, this is so hard. I loved all of these books so much. At this point, I feel like the new favorites category is just like, it's barely a ranking at all within here. All of these are so close, so neck and neck. Okay, we have Kings of the Wild, which I think might take a spot at the very near the top of really enjoyed reading. This could be recency bias because I just finished it like barely four days ago and I loved it. Let's see, maybe right here? Because like The Faithful and the Fallen overall, I think is gonna be a favorite, but if I'm like forcing myself to just look at Malice and not think about what people have told me about like how the series gets better and better, then I think I did like Kings of the Wild more than I liked Malice. But again, it's, it's so close, so it doesn't even, matter. <laughs> okay, the very last book that I read uh, at the end of June was The Emperor's Soul, and this one I think is also going to go in really enjoyed reading, but again, this was also a novella, so in a way it's harder for me to evaluate because it's so short. It doesn't offer as much as some of these other books, but then again, it kind of does because there was a lot packed into here. And it was very impressive what, what Sanderson managed to do with this. So, ah, this is hard. Maybe it'll go just below Jade City and above Alatsue. I think that I need to drop Strange Planet. Yeah, that's good. Just because it's not really a real book, much as I loved it, I don't know. I just feel like I can't compare it in the same way. Okay, I think I'm happy with this. This is hard. I see everyone's like indecision now when they're making tier lists because when they're making them, I'm always like, no, you should put that here. Oh my God, what are you doing? But it's hard. These decisions, they're difficult. But overall, I think I'm happy with the way that this looks. Um, I've read some some really good books. So there. The, there's barely anything to compare between the ones in the new favorite category. And the ones in the really enjoyed reading category, they're up there too. They're just not quite on the same level. And it's obvious based on the name that I really enjoyed them. I loved them, all of them. They they would have all gotten like at least five, four stars. Um, and then some of the ones in the good category would have gotten four stars too. Because like I said, I do tend to give high ratings that's just who I am. And then the ones that are in It Was Fine and actively disliked really aren't that numerous. Like, I've had a good reading year. And 
I'm, I'm really happy about it. So this has been the first half of 2021 for me. So I managed to read 43 books in the first half of 2021, which to be quite honest is more than I would have thought, but I did have like a pretty big reading month in June. And as you can see based on the tier ranking, the quality has been really high. I've been so happy with what I've been reading and I hope that you've enjoyed this tier list and watching my indecision. Actually, you know what? I think I did pretty well. I'm pretty proud of myself. I could have agonized a lot more over that. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Please let me know if you've read any of these books, if you agree or disagree with my ranking of them in the comments. And that is going to be it for this video. Please like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more content from me, and I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye.